Jain Dal, this is Assistant Professor Gagandeep Singh from Ajay Kumar Garbinjini College. Uh, this is lecture series on analog signal processing. Today's topic is transconductance. This is unit 5 and we have different topics in unit 5 which are related to transconductance. First of all, we, have, we will discuss the introduction to the transconductance. Then uh, we will draw some of the elementary building blocks for the circuits. The elementary building blocks we have seen that uh, integrator is the main uh, circuit that is required for the filtering. With that one we have different other circuits that we can uh, draw, we can use for the uh, other uh, higher order filters and the circuits. So we will first of all use transconductance to build elementary building blocks as resistor, integrator, amplifier, summers, gyrators which will give uh, basic of the all basic building blocks of all the filters. Then we will try to realize using transconductance the different order filters. So if we go with this one, we are generally discussing the transconductance and its uses in filters by via the uh, information or the knowledge about the basic building blocks. So till now what we have discussed is, is uh, using op-amps. For example, we have created GICs using two, go, two uh, op-amps and we have, using, we have used GIC to create a floating inductor for the four, uh, four op-amps. However, the use of op-amps is limited by the frequency range. It cannot go beyond some typical frequency range of the gigahertz. Also, there are some limitation, internal limitations of op-amp. For example, arrow is, uh, error is introduced in pole position and the Q factor when we go with the higher frequency order. We have seen that some parasitic poles and the shift in Q is uh, there when we consider op-amp as non-idle. So this error is introduced by gain of op-amp which is taken as AS, gain of op-amp. So to improve uh, the reliability and reduced cost, we use the different ICs, different ICs than the op-amp because the op-amp as the number of op-amps are increased, our cost as well as the reliability is decreasing. So for this purpose to reduce this reliable to increase the reliability and to reduce the cost we use aliasing, anti-aliasing, band limiting, reconstructions even in the predominant digital system continue time filtering that can be that is required to interface with the real world for the its processing so that the uh, the signal that is receiving that is in the continuous format to the digital format can be converted. So inside the digital transmission analog filters are used for the band limiting to get uh, noise reduction as well as the equalizing the gain as well as delay. So uh, most of the uh, uh, applications where these are used uh, for example reading and writing channel on uh, channel of a uh, disk drive analog and have to be used where the frequency is um, hundreds of or tens of megahertz means very high frequency also this filter the filters often need to supply gain equalization to compensate the loss in transmission channel so the signal filtering is uh, solving the dual purpose. One is to uh, the main application, read and for example, read and write. Second is to compensate the losses in the uh, channel that can be removed by using filtering. So uh, if we see with these suggestions, the modern communication industry needs ICE integrated filters in the range of tens or hundreds of megahertz, almost uh, in gigahertz, 
that is not possible through the open also application in giga hand uh, are there for example in two days mobile communication two days wireless mobile communication we are using uh, ku band which is uh, of the gigahertz range so for this one we have to go with the uh, other solution than the open so uh, it is clear that when we are using a higher frequency filter we cannot use rc filters based on uh, or active filters which is rc filter plus op amp because there is a use of high frequencies also we need to have use analog filter analog ic filtering that is the requirement because we have seen it in the previous uh, in the introductory lectures that analog filters are required and they cannot be removed by the digital filters so we have to we have we are facing this issue to solve this issue we have different uh, approaches to so that we can remove this all issues all problems the these issues can be solved by switched capacitor filters this means that we switch the capacitors rapidly so that it can behave as a resistor so this is the capacitor uh, switched capacitor resistance second is the mos fet c mos c method here mos is used in triad reason such that it behaves as a uh, resistor third option is the transconductance c transconductance c uh, we will see why we are using transconductance C and MOSFET C. That means it is the combination of MOSFET as well as the capacitor. And transconductance is the transconductance with the uh, C combination. Now, this transconductance C is usable, useful because it can work from the low audio frequency to the high hundreds of the megahertz, means gigahertz range. So, it has a wide range for the coverage or the uh, for the processing so it can be used for the processing of the signals and this is the our focus of our topic now if we see if we compare the operational traditional operational amplifiers and the transconductance amplifiers first of all we have seen that in the transconductance amplifier we have high range high frequency range so it can use up to hundreds of the gigahertz whereas uh, the op amp cannot be used for the higher bandwidth for a higher frequency range so it has a smaller uh, bandwidth other constructional difference if we see other functional difference if we see uh, this is operational amplifier is voltage controlled voltage source and we have seen that its output depends upon the input voltage this is the basic of the operational amplifier and we can say that the output is proportional to the input and proportionality constant is the gain or we can say that v out is equal to a into v in but however in transconductance we have the ratio of output volt current to the input voltage is the transconductance which is gm or we can say that i out is equal to gm into v in so this is the basic difference between these so this can be said as voltage controlled current source i is the output current source and and uh, so this is voltage controlled current source right so current is source uh, controlled by the Current, uh, voltage controlled by the current source. However, there is another difference that op-amp based active filter create problem in IC uh, which is which is uh, uh, higher uh, capacitive loss. For example, it is limited to capacitors are limited to only 30 picofarads. As we uh, go higher uh, capacitive, the area that is consumed is higher so it cannot create so it creates it consumes a, high, a large area so it cannot create it is difficult to create ICs there is an example that if a typical take example of 
uh, central frequency as 10 kilo radian per second that is approximately 1.5 giga kilohertz with a capacitive of uh, 0 0.2 then the resistance is approximately 5 megahertz which is high very much higher however in the transconductance amplifier if we say transconductance amplifier the parameter can be set by gmc ratio the capacitor and the transconductance so if we have transconductance of uh, 0 0.2 micro ampere per volt and the requirement uh, it is uh, combined with capacitor of 0 0.20 uh, picofarad then we can set central frequency to the uh, 10 kilohertz then we can create R naught which is in the uh, required value only. So if we see uh, how we can create the transconductance, generally if we see uh, a uh, model by model, if we have a BJT model, BJT model, then the transconductance cell can be seen as common emitter. If we draw the model of the common emitter, we know that there is an input capacitance between the input junctions and there is a output resistance and output capacitance between the output junctions. And the current is let's suppose I naught and input is VI, then this can be seen as a one type of the transconductance. Similar case, if we have a MOSFET, MOSFET, we can have a IS source current and resistance of source and the input capacitance. The input given to this one, input uh, voltage for this one is VGS. And we can see that there is a current source which is GM VGS and the input output resistance is R0 and C0. If I0 is the current flowing through the output voltages, then we can have a transconductance GM in this uh, in this MOSFET also. So we can create a BJT as well as a MOS technologies for the for creating uh, transconductances. However, uh, we are restricted. We are going to discuss only MOS transconductances as this is the uh, technology that we are using for the IC fabrications. However, we can use both uh, the models, both the transconductance cells, uh, building blocks for the uh, other cre creation of the transconductance. So, in if we go with the MOS transconductance, we know that the current ID, ID is given by this equation, which is the equation of the uh, MOS transistor, which is half mu COX W by L into VGS minus VT square. Here, uh, COX is the oxide capacitance, which is taken as per unit area. Uh, w by L is the ratio of width by length of the uh, MOSFET. Uh, mu is the mobility of the carriers, Vt is the threshold voltage, Vgs is the applied voltage, Id is the drain current. So here the output current is Id. If we have uh, the total, uh, if we have a DC biasing, the AC current, the AC current that we will apply will be given by this equation which is the DC biasing plus the AC current. So uh, we know that the transconductance is given by the output voltage divided by the input pool, uh, output current divided by input voltage or for the small uh, value we can have the derivative of ID by VGS while taking ID and VGS. So if we divide, uh, if we take derivative of this equation, uh, derivative of this equation by taking VG, VD by VGS, then we can have this equation. So we have taken 
ID as constant, Vt is the threshold, threshold voltage, Vgs is the applied DC voltage. For a particular fab, for a particular MOSFET, ID is a constant. C MOS is uh, oxide capacitance is uh, is not in our hand. Mobility of the charge carrier is in our uh, not in our hand. However, uh, this also depends upon the W by L ratio. So while fabrication of the IC or MOSFET, if we design by using W by L ratio, particular W by L ratio, then we can uh, control the transconductance. So, the transconductance can be created or can be controlled while the fabrication uh, dimensions of the MOSFET. So, uh, we have also defined R0 which is the output uh, resistance as VA by ID. Now here, uh, VA is the early voltage for the MOS device and the effective input capacitance CI in the saturation region is also uh, depend upon the W by WL ratio which is given by 0 0.75 COX and WL. The output capacitance, this is the input capacitance and the output capacitance, it also depends upon the device size, the layout and the order of the uh, capacitance which is 0 0.05 picofarad or less. One uh, most important parameter for which is required for the filter design as we have seen is the bandwidth, is the bandwidth. Uh, let's assume the source is IS. As we have discussed in the PS, we have applied a source IS because the transconductance of cell is driven by another transconductance cell. The, uh, analysis, the output current can be given by I0 is equal to IG into VGS which is driven by this one. And we know that this, uh, this can be given as VGS can be given as 1 by GM into 1 upon S, SCI plus R plus RS into IS. So, we can have a output current equation. So, uh, if we see the whole things, uh, whole uh, circuit, whole uh, cells, both bipolar and the MOS filters, MOS uh, trans transistors can be used as voltage controlled volt current source, which can give transconductance, which can be characterized as transconductance. Right. However, we are focusing on the BJT because of uh, B, uh, because uh, uh, the BJT has a large value of uh, transconductance. Uh, the bandwidth of the both filters is uh, uh, hundreds of megahertz, which is requirement of the uh, transconductance. That's why we are using transconductance. So to to develop the active filters. Uh, built by transconductors, we need to investigate the build, how to build practical transconductance OOTs, which is known as the operational transconductance amplifier that retain the high frequency property of the transistor with uh, which they are constructed. Although in the few cases, single transistors are used, but in the most of the cases, the requirements are more difficult and uh, are indifferent. For example, in the differential input voltage, higher output impedance or the large, larger signals are required. So, uh, some approximations, for example, small signal approximation will not be valid for this. So, if we see uh, a single ended output transconductance, CMOS conductance, transconductance, 
let's see, let's suppose we have one structure of this trans conductance which is using the mirror circuits the current driving driving sources let's suppose we have single ended output the output is taken as i naught at the trans conductance uh, c mos stage the differential uh, there is a differential input pair out which is m1 and m2 which giving the difference of the input voltage is vi so vi is in between that is given to this as well as to this and the both are in the differential mode the m3 and m4 these two uh, are giving the uh, current mirror for the active load to the diff to the m1 m2 and m3 so by uh, m4 m5 is used for the current uh, constant biasing source constant biasing source for uh, these two mosfets m1 and m2 are driven by the constant biasing source ib so if we go with this arrangement we can say that we can say that g3 vg3 and vg4 are equal if we assume all the mosfets are are almost same the vg3 and vg4 will be equal because they are uh, in the uh, current mirror active load so if they are current mirror uh, in current mirror uh, load both vgs vg will be equal they are given driven by the same source also we have given a feedback so v3s and v 4s will be equal let's assume another thing that vg3 is equal to vd3 this is because we have connected the feedback loop so the gain and the voltage uh, the gate and the voltage currents are drain voltages are equal this means that vg3 is going to forward the g negative let's suppose the thresh uh, for the saturation reason we know that uh, v threshold voltage vt must be less than vds right so this whole equation gives that the current given by uh, as in the current mirror so the current given by the drain of the, the m3 and m4 will be equal because all the voltages are equal so they are driven by the uh, both are driven by the equal uh, active load so in addition to the modification in uh, is also necessary for the practical transconductance in analog ics so we prefer the processing signal differential modes because of the uh, other advantages the two main advantages of the differential modes is that voltages and currents if they are corrupted by by uh, other noise signals by switching or the other signals then they can be eliminated by the negative and the positive paths so if they are in that differential mode they can uh, they can be removed the nonlinearity can be removed second thing uh, because we are using active devices there will be some nonlinearity so this nonlinearity can be removed by the differential mode now uh, let's suppose we have id id if we see id for the general uh, mos then it can be given by g1 v and g2 v square due to the non linearity let's suppose the non linearity is of the second order that's why it is square so higher order non linearity can be uh, can be ignored but g1 and g2 will be the non linearity that is predominantly Uh, let's suppose we are applying signal v positive and v negative at the differential inputs then id and id at the positive end and id at the negative end will be there and uh, if we have it if we apply the input currents in the differential modes that means both will be both will be there will be difference so at the end we will receive only twice of the uh, g1 v that means the higher order non linearities will be removed 
so we can have a differential mode differential mode uh, input and we can control the uh, sing, rather than using single enter we can control the gate voltage and the drain voltage or differential output uh, mosfet by using two differential outputs differential outputs at the two different modes and to drive this this one we can use the biasing uh, different biasing voltage the both circuits are same this is single ended where we have only one input output and here we have two differential outputs i not and minus i not so this is giving the differential output so uh, if we draw the uh, it is convenient to have task conductance with more than one output because uh, most of the time we can have non linearity so two output two inputs are required to uh, compensate uh, all the requirements for the circuit so two inputs are sufficient for most of the circuits this can be also this can also be achieved by uh, connecting two transconductances in this case the two currents will be added up because this there is a node that will add up the two currents on the two mos connection so adding current uh, do not need any other circuitry and we can we are receiving uh, the same uh, output current which is the addition of the two transconductances the circuits are simple and consumes less area there is no high impedance nodes where other parasitic capacitance can be there so this is this is giving a, a long time constant which limits the band limit so band limit is not there in the transconductance also we have to note that the transconductance circuits are simple than co as compared to the opens we need one current mirror and one uh, differential mode outputs that is biased by the constant biasing means Uh, in the basic stage mos discuss there is no internal node uh, between the output and the input terminals so this gives the differential mode output so this way we can connect a number of node no, number of transconductances to gives uh, uh, the gm cells so that turn can be added up so if we see this is the uh, circuit that we have seen so the it is convenient to have the task conductance with more than one input and the output so if we see the task conductance in the differential mode we can draw its uh, symbol as we can draw its model in this way that there is a pass there is input capacitance of ci which is a capacitance of the both um, uh, both the m2 m m3 m1 and m2 and the input voltages are v1 and v2 the combination can be v1 the output is transconductance gm uh, the i source the current source the output is since r not and c not the symbol for this one is in this way which is just a uh, rhombus rhombus with opam as truncated set the two uh, inputs are differential one is plus and other is the minus as in the opam case also as it's operational also so it is magnus is the output current which is i not and we have giving the two uh, voltage we are giving the differential voltage let's suppose vi so this is the transconductance symbol of transconductance and the transconductance of this one is given by i not into gm vi so uh, so in this lecture we have discussed the basic of the transconductance we have discussed that how transconductance can be created using mosfet as a bjt then we have seen also that the mosfet can be used for the transconductance and we have seen some of the basic of the transconductance which is known as which is given by gm in the next lecture we will discuss some uh, more features of the transconductance and then we will discuss the basic elementary building blocks how we create by using gm thank you